Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving math problems out of this manual here, the official study manual for T's. 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll solve some problem. Today we'll have a continuation of what we were doing yesterday, which is to order numbers on a number line either in decreasing order or increasing order. That's all we're going to do here. We're going to do four examples. Four examples that we're going to do relates to the topic that we have, to the, to the example that we did on page number 143 yesterday. Page 143, the example that we did yesterday. But the four examples that we're going to do today, they are four bonus problems. They are not in the book, so don't try to look for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the four problems one by one on the blackboard. As soon as I put the problem on the blackboard, I want you to pause the video, do it yourself, and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Okay? If at the end of the video you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at the first one. Exa example number one. It says, it says, which fraction, which fraction is greater? Which fraction is greater? Two third or three quarters? Two third or three quarters? The easiest and simplest way to tackle this thing whenever you have a situation like this, here it's quite straightforward and simple because they are two very simple fractions, but sometimes they give us three, sometimes they give us four to compare. The easiest and the simplest way to compare different fractions is to make sure that their denominators are the same. As long as the, de the, as long as the denominators are the same, as long as the bottom is the same, then we only have to look at the top part. Here we see, here we see a three, here we see a four, how can we make the same? Well, why don't we multiply this guy by 4 over 4 and multiply this guy by 3 over 3. And now the, now the denominator is the same, is 12 over here, is 3 over 3, not 3 over 4. Of course it cannot be 3 over 4 because we have to multiply it by the, whatever, whatever we multiply top by, we have to multiply the bottom by the same number. Because now 3 over 3 is 1 and by multiplying this number by 3 over 3, which is 1, we haven't changed this value. So now here we have 4 times 3, here we have 4 times 3, they have the same denominator at the bottom, it plays no role, it plays no role. So here's what's going on, so we can ignore it, because they're the same, bottom is the same. So it just becomes 4 times 2 versus 3 times 3. That's it, and you can figure out very quickly which one is bigger, this is 8, that's 9. So the quicker way, the quicker way, the quicker way to compare the fraction, Quicker way is compare the fraction. Now, now we're going to redo it, and I'm going to show you the quicker way without without doing all this mumbo jumbo. We had we had two third, two third, and three quarters. So what we do is, you see, this four over there that's what was bottom, the four that was at the bottom here, the four that was at the bottom here of this fraction, ended up on this side. It became four times two. So we do four times two. And this 3 that was at the bottom here ended up there, 3 times 3. Multiply this by 3, 3 times 3. And you just look, this is 8 and this is 9, which means 3 quarter, 3 quarter is bigger than 2 third. That's all. That's all there is. And we can go on comparing things all day long, it will never end. For example, here's the other one. Which one is bigger, 5 6 or 6 7? It's very easy. 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 5 is 35, and therefore this is bigger. Because it's 36 versus 35. Let's do one more. Oh, these, are, these are not something I was planning on, but let's do one more just for the hell of it. How about 9 11 or 7 8? I'm just making them up, you understand? Well, there you go. 11 times 7 is 77, and 9 times, 9 times 8, uh, ten, 10 times 8 would be 80, so it's, uh, 10 8 is 80, so it's going to be 72. There you go, this guy is bigger. 
Let's do the next example. This wasn't part of four examples I was planning on. The next one is the three one. Example number two. 67 over 100, two third, and three fifth. So the first thing we have to do is find the least common multiple multiplier, LCM it's called. And the way we find the LCM is to write them down 100, 3, and a 5, and find the LCM. If you can find any common factor between at least two of these three numbers, we can start the process. If I see 100, I see 5, let's divide by 5. 100 divided by 5 would give us 20, 3 just comes down, and 5, 5 divided by 5 is 1. There we go. 5 times 3 is 60. 60 times 5 is 300, or 5 times 20 is 100, times 3 is 300, which means the least, which means the least common multiplier is 300. If we can make all of them 300, we can compare the top because the bottom will be the same. Let's multiply this guy by 3 over 3, so it becomes 3 times 100 is 300. Let's multiply this guy by 100 over 100. Now 3 times 100 is 300, and this is a 5. 60 times 60 will do the job because 60, 6 fives are 30, therefore 60 times 5 is 300. Now we can compare the top. Now we we'll compare the top. So here we have 67 times 3, we can have to do it out here 67 times 3, 7 times 3 is 21, 1 carry 2, 18 plus 2 is. I get 201. Is it correct? 201, I guess. Yes, 201. Here we get 200. And here we get 180. There we go. So this guy is the smallest one because it's 180. That guy is the smallest one. 3 fifth is smaller than this guy, which is 2 third, which is smaller than this guy, which is 201, which is this one. There we go. They are in ascending order, increasing order. If they want it in decreasing order, you start from here. If they want it in descending order, you simply write 67 over 100 is greater than 2 third, which is greater than 3 fifth. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Before we do one more, Let's take, a, let's take a look at these, the same thing one more time. Instead of, instead of trying to figure out the least common multiplier, which happened to be 300, and which required some work, sometimes, every once in a while, you can be a little lazy. An approximate. Approximation is okay as long as you don't go crazy, as long as you don't go wild. For example, instead of 300, why don't we try to convert everything into 100? But this is already 100. Why don't we multiply this guy by 20 over 20? But how do we convert this into 100? We cannot. The closest we can come, the closest we can come up with is 33 over 33. Well, 33 times 3 is 99, which is close enough to be 100. It's close enough. It's 99, it's not exactly 100. We won't tell anybody. So now we, there we go. This is 67, this is 66, and this is 60. There we go. Which means this is the smallest one, which was 3 fifths. This is the middle one because this is 66, which was 2 third. And this is the largest one, 67 over 100. Same as before, obviously, same as before. It's not going to change anything. Let's do one more. It also it also depends on how far how far apart the answer choices are. If the answer choices are too far apart, you can you can approximate. Here, which one is bigger? Four seventh or five ninth? Four seventh or five ninth? Well we know the trick. Let's multiply them. This is four times four times nine is thirty-six and this is 7 times 5 is 35, so this one is bigger. 4 7 is bigger than 5 9. What we are technically doing here, 
what we're technically doing is this. What we're really doing is this. I'm going to show you exactly what is going on here. So this is a quick way. What is going on behind the curtain, what is going on behind the curtain is that we're making the denominators the same. In this process that we just did, we're making the denominators the same. And what we're doing here is this. We're taking this fraction 4 7 and multiplying it by 9 over 9. See, 9 over 9. And we're taking this fraction and multiplying it by 7 over 7. Now this one is the bottom of 9 times 7, 9 times 7, and this one is the bottom of 9 times 7. And since they have the same bottom, it doesn't matter, they play no role. All we are interested in 36 is more than 35, because they have the same denominator. And therefore, what's, what happens is that because they have the same denominator, it, it plays no role. We can ignore the denominator. There you go. We just ignore the denominator. That's what's going on here. Let's do one more. This one, I insist that you do it yourself, pause the video, do it yourself. You're going to arrange them in, you're going to order them in. Descending order. Two ninth, point two two two, and eleven over fifty. 11 over 50. I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video so you can do it yourself. All right, let's get going, shall we? This is point 0.222. Why don't, we, why don't we take this guy and multiply top and bottom by 2. If you multiply top and bottom by 2, it becomes 22 over 100. And 22 over 100 is just 0.22. And if it makes it, if it, if it makes your life easier, you can stick a zero here to, to be able to see that this is 220. This is 222. Let's figure out what that is. We're gonna have to do it long here. Divide two by nine. Divide two by nine. So a little bit lower. Or just switch here. Two by nine. Rather the other ground. Divide two by nine. Okay? Let's put a decimal. It becomes a twenty. Goes two times, it's an eighteen, comes down two, put a zero, put a two, comes an eighteen, two, put a zero, put a two, eighteen, it goes on forever and ever and ever. So what that means is that so it goes forever, it doesn't end. So what that means is that the 2 ninth, 2 ninth is simply 0 0.2222 forever and ever. Now if we stop after 3 digits, if we just stop after 3 digits and just put a dot here, which is perfectly fine, strictly speaking, but you may have trouble comparing this and that. So in that case, put one more 2 because it goes on forever. Put one more 2 and then go back, go back and fix these. Now we have 4 digits here. Fix this thing. This is one more zero. It has four digits after the decimal. Four digits after the decimal. And put one more here. Now we can clearly see that 2222, this guy, is bigger, bigger than 2220, which came from 0.222, which in fact is bigger than 11 over 50. Because this one boiled down to 0.22200, this one was 0 0.2220, and this one was 0.2222. There you go. We'll call it a day here. We'll meet tomorrow, and tomorrow what we'll do is, we'll do nothing else, we won't get distracted. We'll work strictly, strictly on the five problems that we see on page number 144. If you turn the page on page 144, you will see the five problems. And it might be wiser, it might be better, it might be fruitful for you to work on those five problems ahead of time yourself and then compare your work against the work, against the work that you and I will do to, to, together tomorrow. You'll get more out of it that way. And that will be the end of the topic. After tomorrow we'll finish this topic and then we'll move on to the next topic on chapter number 23. Okay? Send me an email as I said if you wish to get hold of me at 
fishmoneyprep at iCloud.com. Alright, bye now.